So one of my favorite strategies is the bull put credit spread. I love this strategy because it's risk defined and you can be successful if the stock moves up or even if it stays flat. In this video, I'm gonna show you the process I use to scan for these trades in Market Chameleon. All right, let's get into it. So before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that the bull put spread scanner is actually a premium feature. And so you're either gonna need the options trader uh, premium plan or the total access plan if you wanna be able to access the screener. I'll put a link for that in the description. All right. Okay, so uh, to find the screener, just go to screeners and then bull put spreads right here. And then we're just gonna go, uh, you know, changing all these filters and then go through the different tabs and change the ones we want. And that will narrow down the list, hopefully from 40,000 entries to about like 10 or 20. So this is pretty much the process I go through when I'm looking for uh, bull put spreads. And I actually have a preset, so I don't have to change these all the time, but you know, for this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself. So I'm gonna start from scratch. Okay, so for this first tab, the option spread parameters, I'm just gonna go uh, for expiration, I'm gonna do the next 30 days. So this will be finding us uh, bull put spreads, you know, in any at any expiration within the next 30 days. So it's not a specific date or anything. Although if you wanted to, you could choose an actual expiration date, but I'm just gonna do the next 30 days. And for the spread between strikes, um, I actually like to do $5 because I like to know exactly, you know, ahead of time, you know, what the risk is of the credit spreads I'm doing. So I like to leave this at five, $5, so the risk is 500, you know, minus the premium collected. So I like to leave it there, but you can do max $5 if you had maybe had a smaller account and didn't, you know, want to necessarily risk $5 or anything. But I like to have the same exact amount each time. So I do $5 right there. Return if stock flat. So this means if the stock does nothing through the life of your trade, how much will you make if the stock just stays flat? So I like to leave this at above 20%. And cushion to break even, I like to set this to at least 1%. So you have a little downside protection. And for the buy strike delta, um, I'm leaving this blank right here. But for the sell strike delta, I'm doing above negative 40. So this is just stating that, you know, we're giving ourselves a little, a little downside cushion. And we don't have to set the buy strike delta because we have the spread between strikes at five bucks. So it's just gonna take, you know, whatever sell strike they choose and just do $5 below that for the buy strike. And for earnings date, um, you know, you can leave this to any if you don't mind trading through earnings, but, but lately I've been, just, you know, leaving it at after expiration or none, just, you know, if I don't want to trade through earnings. But if I don't care, you know, you might actually get some more premiums. You can leave it at any but I'm gonna leave it after expiration or none. And I'm gonna leave these blank for right now. And for theoretical edge, I'm gonna leave this at any positive. I'll explain what this is in a minute. And for the Theo win rate, I'm gonna do above 60% and I'll explain this too. And for the show best only, you will see that like right now, we have a lot of the results are, you know, there's multiple Microsoft ones, multiple Nvidia ones, like Nvidia has a ton of them right here. So if we do show best only, it says right here, it says this filter will show you only the best available entry per symbol if selected, taking into consideration the other filters already applied. So it's kind of gonna take the best of each of these symbols and just use that one and eliminate the rest of them so you don't have you know a list of 100 NVIDIAs or something like that. So I actually like to use the best return if stock flat by symbol one. So you should see this list go down from 252 Right now it's down to 84. Now I'm gonna explain what the uh, theoretical edge and the theoretical win rate is because it's pretty important uh, when dealing with Market Chameleon. They use it all over the place in all the scanners. Okay, so in Market Chameleon, uh, the theoretical edge and the theoretical win rate are very important. And uh, I'm gonna explain those right here. So the theoretical edge, it says, a positive edge in green is when the current market price of the spread is a good deal in relation to the theoretical value calculated from the historical distribution. So what this is saying is that you see this, um, I'm gonna use this uh, NVIDIA one as an example. So you see it has a theoretical edge of 8.7% and it expires on December 15th. So that's about like 10 trading days from here. So what this is saying, this theoretical edge is saying, for the last four years, that's what they use for their back tests, that Market Chameleon is back testing this particular you know, bull put spread on NVIDIA with 10 trading days left using a 40 delta, you know, and right here, spread between strikes. So uh, a $5 wide bull put spread at a 40 delta repeated for the last four years continuously, you know, with 10 trading days left to expiration. And in all of those trades, the win rate was 66.7%. And it's saying the theoretical edge is 8.7%. And how it, 
arrives at this number is out of all of those trades, the option premium, the average was collected was $1.58. And the current market price is $1.85. So you're, you're actually collecting more premium than the average for this pretty much exact trade in this exact situation. So here's your theoretical edge. It's the difference between the market price and the theoretical value. So the market price is saying you're collecting more option premium than the theoretical value that this trade should be giving you. So here's your edge, 8.7%. So when we scan for this, we're just saying we want to have any positive edge. You know, you could even, you know, if you're getting a lot of results and you want to narrow it down, you can narrow it down even further, say above 10% or something. So the theoretical win rate is just saying that of all these back-tested trades in this exact situation, this was the, you know, the win rate for this. So for this NVIDIA trade in the similar situation for the last four years, the win rate was 66.7%. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can even sort by the percent win rate if you're more interested in win rate or if you're you could sort by you know theoretical edge if you're more interested in that so uh that's pretty much how to understand you know the theoretical values the theoretical edge percent win rate and theoretical value is very important and that's why i like to uh include these in the filters right here so we're only looking at trades that have a theoretical win rate of above 60 percent you could even raise this higher but you know i like to to get a little more results but you can raise that to 70 percent if you want to and uh now we're going to Go on to the next tab. Okay, so in underlying stock ideas, um, I'm just gonna change this to mark cap at least over 1 billion, average stock volume over 1 million, average option volume. I like to have this over 2,000, I think is good. Stock price, uh, this is up to you, you know, how expensive you wanna get with this. I'm just gonna do above 25. And I'm gonna leave these blank. Um, stock ideas, I'll leave that blank. Moving average indicator. I'm gonna set this to any bullish. So you see all of these, these are the different moving average indicators and any bullish ones are the, you know, the uptrends or the bullish crossovers or the fast bullish crossovers. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And you see it already narrowed us down to 35 entries. And uh, that's it for this tab. And uh, now I'm gonna, I don't really do anything at this payoffs at expiration tab, but I'm actually gonna set some uh, filters here at the historical distribution and seasonality tab. So in the historical distribution and seasonality tab, I'm gonna change a couple of these filters right here. But before I do, I'm gonna explain what it's actually doing. So under the summary tab right here, you see you know, the percent win rate, which is what we talked about before. So for Nvidia, it's a 66.7% win rate you know, for all of this. So every time this, this trade in this exact situation was repeated. So with 10 days to expiration, you know, this trade was repeated over the last four years. And this was the win rate that you had at, you know, 40 Delta $5 wide uh, bull put spread. So this was the win rate you had. But if you go to historical seasonality tab, you could see how this trade is performed just from November 24th to December 15th without regard to what it's done the rest of the year, just this particular time frame in this particular season. So it actually has 12 observations. So it's done it for the last 12 years. And uh, this one right here has had a percent positive observation of 58%. So it's actually less in this particular time frame than throughout the entirety of the, of the whole year if you're just putting the trade one after another. This the historical seasonality is just measuring this particular time frame how it's done. So it's actually done worse at 58.3% of percent positive observations. And if you go here, this one right here is 66.7%. So, you know, if you're judging this NVIDIA trade, how it's done seasonally, this one is actually done poorer. So what I want to do is to sort this. So we're getting anything maybe above 60%. So we're, you're going to see this NVIDIA trade weeded out right here. See? Now this one's gone and we got a new one, percent uh, positive observation, 66.7%. So that other one is gone. So now this is like a double back test. So now we're making sure we have a win rate over 60% all of all, you know, for all of the trades at all times, and also at least a 60% win rate for this particular, you know, time frame. In, in, in this NVIDIA case, it's November 24th to December 1st. See, it actually back tests for, because we did, if you go up here, because we did next 30 days, these don't all expire at the same time. So this one right here, this Microsoft one, is uh, November 24th to December 15th. So it's back tested this exact time period for the last you know 12 years. And for this Nvidia one, it's done November 24th to December 1st time frame and back tested that. 
So this is very interesting. So it actually, it takes the time period and just back tests that specific time, time period. And you get a bunch of different ones because we have different expiration cycles because we picked the next 30 days. So now you can judge which has a good win rate all times and which has a good win rate during this particular time. And that's what this is all about. And another thing for stock median return, I just want to do any positive. It's not going to get rid of any of these, I don't think. But yeah, I just keep that there just as a, a fail safe. So yeah, so that's pretty much all we have right here for all the filters I use. And then after you're done with this, what you want to do is just save this preset. So I put save new preset and give it a name, then press save preset. Then any anytime you come into here and immediately it'll load up your, your uh, scan ready to go. So uh, two quick things I want to cover before I uh, wrap this video up. Just want to go over this little uh, analysis pop-up and this uh, expiration pop-up right here. So I'm going to go for this NVIDIA trade right here. I'm going to click the analysis pop-up and you see a bunch of stuff right here. It says uh, theoretical value of the spread using historical stock return distributions, four years of data, five day hold intervals, and excludes earnings periods. And this one has 90 total observations. And so you see the number of occurrences right here. And this one is 24 times it went below the, uh, the lowest strike price and five times it went in between, and 61 times it uh, expired above. So this is the value of the spread at expiration. So, you know, if, if it expired above the uh, short strike price, obviously, you know, it expires at zero, that's good. The bull put spread expired worthless, and that's what we want. And for this one, you know, when it, and when it expired below the, uh, the long strike price, uh, this one, it expired at $5. So this is a max loss right here. And that happened 24 times. And uh, expiring worthless happened 61 times, with 68% of the time. And this one happened 27% of the time. But 6% of the time, it expired in between. So yeah, the theoretical value is 143, and it takes this by dealing with all of these values right here and the number of occurrences. So 6% of the time, it had it expired with a value of $1.67. And if you wanted to, you can you know take a look at all these actual transactions and see you know, when it was above, when it was between, and when it was below, if you're into this sort of thing. And lastly, I always like to uh, click on this right here, the uh, expiration link right here. It opens up the P&L graph. So you can actually see you know, visually what the trade's gonna look like. So just press calculate. All these values are already set up for you automatically. All right, so if you hover your mouse over here, you can see you know, the payout expir at expiration is 165. And right down here, you know, the max loss is 335, which is just, you know, the, the max spread amount, which was $5 and then minus the uh, credit received. And that's how you get this value right here. So the payout expiration is minus 335. So that's your max loss and your max win is $1.65. And you see these lines right here. This is the current price. And each one of these is a one standard deviation move. So, you know, if you wanted to, you could look for credit spreads that are, you know, beyond this move or not. But so this is how you get a visual representation of uh, what the trade looks like. Also, you could uh, go up here to these ratios, maybe depending on your situation, how much you want to risk. You could bump up the, the number of contracts. And now you could see, you know, the max gain would be 825 and the max loss would be 1675. So depending on, you know, how much you want to risk. You can just keep bumping up the contracts and uh, figure out exactly what you want to do. Then go into your trading platform of choice and just enter this trade. And I like to make sure to you know check out this P&L graph before I put on an actual trade. So hopefully you could see how amazing this bull put scanner is for easily finding daily back-tested trade ideas. I use this scanner all the time and I pretty much can't live without it at this point. And if you want to scan for your own bull put spreads, make sure to click the link in the description to sign up for Market Chameleon. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. All right. Talk to you in the next one.